Look, I'm just a geologist. I like rocks. I love rocks. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Geology Flannel Cast. My name is Steve. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris. Good evening. I am Jesse. Good evening. Good evening. Hey. Jesse always slows it down right there. Hey, We're all trying to bring high energy, and Jesse just goes, Good evening. <laughs> and I, well, I'll bring it up. Happy fall equinox. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't even realize you, it was today. Listening tomorrow, it was yesterday. Yeah. Happy fall <laughs> equinox plus one. Yeah. Or when this comes out, it might be Equinox Plus 2. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Right, Anyways, well, happy yeah. autumn, everybody. Yeah. yeah. How about it? Uh, I tell you what, man. It has been gorgeous out. Oh, it's, up here this weather is my wheelhouse. The great northeast. Yeah. Yeah. The, delightful in the southeast. Absolutely a delight. Yeah. we're it's, it's downright chilly at night, and I love it. Oh, man. It's making me so happy. Yeah. Just so happy. Anyway. So we got an action-packed uh, current events style podcast coming your way. Yeah, uh, baby. I mean, the two stories I'm going to talk about, well, no, I'll tie it in. I'll make them current. There we you go. Know. Look at this. <laughs> that yeah, was... The first story takes place in 1950. So. Great. So that's that. like, <laughs> all right, that's like, okay, the definition of before president, right? And carbon dating standards. Yeah. No, we're yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, and the other one we're talking about Drake the rapper, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Good time. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, but before we get started, I'd like to thank some of our sponsors. And by some of our sponsors, I mean our Patreons who are listening. We actually have one listener listening right now. Hey Mark, what's up? Um, but uh also the formatting formula. Formatting formula has been with us for a few years now, and they are excellent and we love them. And they can handle all of your Word document formatting needs. Check them out at formattingformula.com. Or if you want to teach yourself to fish, so to speak, you can go to uh, YouTube forward slash C forward slash formatting formula. And they have like hundreds of hours of videos on how to do all different kinds of stuff with your Word formatting documents. And they're nice little snippets. They go nice and slow, but you can always just pause the YouTube video, try it out for yourself, hit play, do it again. Like, and they have, they have it for all different kinds of versions of word. Um, they even do like Mac stuff, you know, for word for Mac, because apparently it's different. You know, those mm-hmm. Apple people, you just got to make things difficult. I'm just kidding. I'm sure like half the people listening to us are listening to on some sort of Apple product right now. But anyway, formatting formula, please check them out. Let them know that the geology flannel cast sent you. Um, and I don't know, ask them for a discount. Be like, ah, oh, Steve said, if I mention the geology flannel cast, he'll give us a discount. You know, that, that may or may not be true, but we'll see what they say. Yeah. Roll the dice. <laughs> you have to yeah. We're, we're uh, coming out with our own promotional thing right here <laughs> on the fly without them knowing. So <laughs> next week, that's we'll unsponsored. That's great. <laughs> Yes, next week when we're crying into our <laughs> broken microphones. It's <laughs> a really good business model, gentlemen. I, I, I like this. I like I like where this is going. Hey, let's just let's just make our own. Just you know, it's just, we'll just be uh, trailblazers. You know. Yeah. Just, exactly. Um, I will say, Steve mentioned. You know, uh, if if you if you got a few extra, a few extra bucks, and you want to support the podcast, we have a Patreon. Yes. But, uh, patreon.com slash geology flannel cast or geology flannel um i was looking at a, our one of our recent patreons uh uh good friend of mine longtime listener of the show uh pointed out uh that geology flannel cast is spelled wrong on the patreon page <laughs> so, we are not, killing it we're not we're not here to teach you english we're here to teach you <laughs> geology <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that, that's uh, that's my my buddy Barry. Pointing I out. really like how you say this. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yep, right at the top. <laughs> see, there's <laughs> Jesse. There's certain things that we talk about off air. <laughs> no, say, we could have yeah. talked about this eight we minutes ago. Literally, yeah. we're just chatting for the last thirty minutes before we started this. That was something that really. I didn't think about it. I don't think about when we're talking. I'm just yeah. enjoying your company. Free flow, baby. Free yeah. flow. I don't. Such things don't pop up in my head. But so, if you become a Patreon, yeah. we can actually maybe take time or 
Or if you want to just be like a patron who just donates by like, hey, I can fix your website. Hey, I can, uh, I don't know. You guys are talking about BIOS or something. I don't even know what that means. So, you know. <laughs> so I'd like to know that the, uh, the Patreon page is fixed now. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of service you get as a Patreon. You yeah, get, seriously. Yeah. Instantly. <laughs> you want something changed? We'll change it. That's we'll how change it, goes. it live on air. That's just it'll be brought to my attention. We're very transparent here at the Flannel Cast. Apparently, <laughs> we are too transparent. Yeah. <laughs> no, but please, uh, please check us out. Um, last week, we were the number one natural science podcast in South Africa for a single episode. Actually, who cares? For, for one episode yeah we were yeah number yeah number one baby one. number and one let's tell the people what that podcast was steve what was it uh it was about kimberlite pipes correct kimberlite pipes in, in south africa so yeah. thank you to all of our south africa fans downloading that that was a pleasant surprise when i when yeah. i saw that stat. if i'm reading these stats correctly i if yeah. I, <laughs> I'm picturing your computer just like the Matrix when you're like. <laughs> it's actually they just send me an abacus like every raining, week and it's raining the, down <laughs> numbers. <yeah. laughs> so thank you to our South African fans. We are we're going to start a world tour and start off in Johannesburg. I think. Yeah, Ooh. I'm in. That beautiful, down there. Let's yeah, do it. I'm in. Happy. Let's I've, do it. I've never Enough. been. Happy spring equinox to our South African list. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Very, very good. Very good. I've never been to the African continent. Me neither. I have been, let's face it, I haven't been most places. So that, that's not saying much. Never mind. I don't really let you out much. <laughs> I've anymore. never left Delaware County, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like Charlie from It's Always Yeah, it's always guys just about to say that. He never left Philly. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um, all right, guys. Let's uh, let's get started with this. Who wants uh, who wants first dibs? So I have uh, just an. I'll if you guys don't mind, I'll start because my right. thing's real short and just kind of a cool little thing that just popped up. Uh, shout out to one of our colleagues we teach with. Nick sent this my direction. Um, <clears throat> so Android, the operating system. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. The Android operating system. I've heard of it. Heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Android actually has an earthquake alert system that turns phones running the Android operating system into mini seismometers. So there was an earthquake in Los Angeles. Uh, I think it was this, uh, excuse me, September 18th, I think is when the earthquake was. And they actually tweeted out a video and we can post this on the website, but it's a, it's a video of all the different seismometers on all the people's different phones. And you can see these concentric, concentric circles of when the P and S waves arrive at essentially, I guess, people's homes or businesses, where, wherever it was. And it, it's really pretty cool. So I'm watching it now. That's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. You can see the, the first wave of the P and S waves. Yeah. I so it's like, yeah, it's like these, you know, you see all the dots turn yellow and then you see all the dots turn red when, the, yeah, the primary wave hits it and then the secondary so, wave. So geez. it's recorded in real time. Huh. I got some, uh, I wonder how that works because it looks like it was a, uh, was it a 4.7 earthquake? Is That's what the website says. Four, four point, well, it was originally 4.5. 4. 5. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm looking at a different image a little further down. But all right, so 4.5. It's not a very strong earthquake, and that's surprising that they can pick up on that. Because yeah. so a four point five earthquake, what do you guys? That's like a like a like if there's like a a tractor trailer kind of driving down your street, kind of like the really slight yeah. rumblings you would feel yeah. from something, or like a train. Uh, if you had like a, a little more, yeah, like, like, like a freight yeah. train, a freight train, a freight right, next to you. right next to your house, maybe yeah. Like that. If you, have you ever been stuck on an overpass, like on a highway? Yeah, that's a good one. Like you're stuck in traffic and your car starts shaking like this. It's it's something like that, like noticeable. Mm -hmm. Like a, a f over a four is noticeable. So you're going to notice that something's shaking. You're not, it's not like significant damage or things like that, but it's definitely, people will notice it. Yeah. So something like this, 
yes, if if you're that phone that's right above the epicenter, mm-hmm. chances are, well, thank you. You were just the first data point. Like we don't really have time to warn you. But if you're in those first couple phones, then the operating system can actually send out warnings to phones around that, that concentric circle around those initial phones. And then actually the further away it is give people more and more and more time. Yeah. Like if it was a bigger earthquake than a 4.5, say it was like yeah. a, a 6.7 or something like that. It'd be like enough time to stop trains, enough time to turn all the tra- traffic lights red, something like that. Enough time, you know, to just say duck and cover. Yeah. You know, yeah. Turn off the gas, turn off the, Yeah. Because that's that's the thing with earthquakes. We still don't have. I mean, I, to me, that seems like that's like the holy grail of like earthquake science is to come up with a way to predict these things, and especially like the really really big ones. And they're it's not there yet. They but they have these like these systems, like you were saying, Steve, where it's like you know now they're able to you know physically watch the P wave and the S wave, you know, propagate out from from the um, you know from where the where the earthquake, I guess the the, the focus of the earthquake. Um, but and they could they could do that before because there's mm-hmm. seismometers placed yeah, all yeah. around the planet, yeah, and especially in places prone to earthquakes, but they can never do it in this like real time, yeah, 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 real real time where it's real time enough where they can actually put it out to the masses quickly, yeah, sure, sure. So, my question would be. And I, you guys don't have the answer for this, but it's just a fun thing to kind of talk about. You don't know so, that. You don't know. I'm that. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. fine. <laughs> Riddle me this, Batman, right? <laughs> so when you install a seismometer, I think we've talked about this on a, on a somewhat recent episode within like the last month or two. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But when you install a seismometer, you want it to be in a really quiet area. Right, you don't want it to be right off of a highway because there's just there's actually just too too much seismic noise coming off of the off of a highway. That would be bad placement. Yeah, you, you don't mm-hmm. want it. You don't want it in a city, right? Because yep. there's just there's just too much background noise um, that these seismometers are picking up, and, and you're not going to be able to pick up the really really faint stuff. So, yeah. oh, sorry, continue your thought. Well, I was my question for you guys. What do you guys think about this? Is you know, these are on people's phones. So they're not like, you know, people are walking around, people are whatever, sitting in their office and whatever. They're, they're just going through their lives. Uh, um, don't think that there's, I'm surprised that there wasn't too much background noise. And they were, they were actually able to pick up these seismic waves off of the phones. That's what my question, it, like it, how, what do you guys I'm think? I'm sure they have some sort of filter that like, yeah. An algorithm it needs to be significant shaking. Otherwise, it they're, just yeah, they're taking the whole group and they're yeah. sort of seeing what the average and they can find the outliers probably and they just throw them out. That's yeah, yeah, right. Like if you're at like a Sky Zone trampoline park or something like that, <laughs> yeah. ignore ignore those data points. But yeah. uh, but if it say if it's at like three in the morning and everybody's phone sitting on their charger somewhere. But then all of a sudden it starts. That's a moving. good point. Let's see what time it was. Does it say? Um, I think it was. Ele- this says. Um, I don't know if this is the actual. No, you know, I don't want to. If it's bad info, I don't want to. I don't want to say. So it. I know. Yeah. Just a side story. They, the seismometer we have at Temple is up on our Ambler campus, which is outside the city. But yeah. it's buried next to the soccer fields. Now they don't use that soccer field i mean it's just like an intramural field now but it used to be where the soccer team both men's and women's practiced and played now they're they have a, a stadium on campus but um <clears throat> but the seismometer would pick up when like they would be running on that side of the field you would see <laughs> like it's funny yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah they're super sensitive you don't obviously want them Next also, year. this I've heard uh, this. I oh man, do, I, did we talk about that? I feel like we're repeating ourselves, but the seismometers in Seattle can pick up when the Seattle Seahawks are playing the football game because it's the loudest stadium in the in the country. Yeah, yeah. Most, signed. I feel like most like college stadiums, they always there's a story once or twice like uh, a year when there's big games. It's always like the seismometer picked up the stadium going crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because. 
they're very sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a hundred thousand. Yeah. 200 pound people jumping up and down at the same time. <laughs> like you're essentially creating your own seismic waves. Yes. Yeah. So I, I wonder what the threshold is, how, how, um, what the earth, like the, what the minimum earthquake is that they can pick up. You know? uh, it's a 3.3. Oh, okay. okay. No, I just made that up. I was going oh. <laughs> to say some, I know some, um, I want it, to, it's low. It's like, it's less than one. No, oh, no, oh, yeah. on the, no, I'm talking no. about on the phones. I'm, I'm talking about, oh, yeah, for the, phones. yeah, I, I know like the, with the, like the heavy duty, like, you know, seismometers, oh, yeah. they're super sensitive, yeah. but I'm, I'm wondering sure what pull my, my phone, oh, my phone does less than one. I pull it. It's just like a barrel seismometer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but if you think about it, uh, they're not going to, I don't want to, it's going to sound terrible, but they're not going to waste their time with anything less yeah. than that's going true. to cause damage or yeah. to cause human, cons- you know, yeah. And so safety yeah, hazard. 4.0 earthquake. I don't even know if a 4.0 earthquake will cause yeah. damage, even in areas that don't have building codes designed for, for earthquakes. So like Los Angeles, like their building codes are, they have lots of, you know, California in general has lots of earthquakes. So their building codes are different than the building codes in anywhere on the East coast. Yes. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> I, I think it, you know, they, they, I'm sure somebody's looked into it and yeah. figured out like, okay, this is, this is what the normal background noise is, is X. Yeah. Uh, this is well, where I wonder if we they start know. to see damage is, you know, this level. So we're going to, we're going to shoot for somewhere between those it would, two. It would be interesting too, to see how, because this is more of like a, a almost like a Mercalli scale thing where, because they're, it's just like your GPS yeah. accelerometer. So it's all about how shaking is perceived. So you, I, I would like to see a couple more earthquakes to see if you could really figure out the magnitude because depth is going to matter here. Because you could have a 5.0, but if it's 100 kilometers down, it's going to shake the surface a lot less. No, that, that's true too. But uh, again, I think in this instant we're not looking for real accurate scientific data we're just looking you know is there an earthquake do we need to now, do we need to do something about it when it did happen did it send that ear piercing alarm like when we get like flood watches around I, here i that's a good i don't i don't have audio of what exactly did but it but it does have these screen shots it says like earthquake nearby drop cover hold like it shows people like ducking down getting under tables like i do it's always sort of funny to be on like be on the train coming home and there'll be like a flood warning and it's just like everyone's phone goes off at the same time yeah and it's just like ear piercing i had that at my uncle's funeral there was an amber alert oh. and everybody's phone went off in the middle of the funeral yeah that was that was a little weird you no know, what i always hate is when like the whole room gets it and then like eight minutes later my phone goes off i'm like <laughs> why am i the you know you're, you're singled game, out here like yeah. game of nokia snake was blocked. <laughs> So the other thing I'm, I'm wondering about uh, how this algorithm works is if with the accelerometers, they can just match up the, the average frequency of a P wave and the average frequency of an S wave because it's super mm-hmm. low frequency sound. That's all seismic waves are is a super duper low frequency sound. And they must have, I wonder if they have a sound profile yeah, like was... P waves on average or at this Hertz. Cause what is it? It's like, it's like a really I don't know what the Hertz is for the, for the seismic waves, but it's, it's a very, very low frequency. Yeah. It's, it's, I want to say it's below 20. Yeah. Like, like 20 is like deep, deep bass from like a subwoofer. Like, you know, the subwoofer range might be down to like 15 or 10 or something. We, like um, and that's why some people think like animals can perceive these things because they can hear it. Uh, this leads me to two things. Sasquatch? Real fast, yeah. real fast. Uh, yeah. The frequency of earthquakes goes from 0.01 to 10 hertz. Okay, to yeah. 10. So. Yeah, and so humans can hear from, this is a, 
uh, 20 to 20,000 hertz. We, we should do something on the Tau hum. So like, oh, the, the, the ta Taos in yeah. New Mexico? Yeah. So is it just waves hitting or something like that? It, yeah, it's it's, like, well, that's one of the hypotheses. It's like waves resonating in Baja, California, in, the, in like Baja, I, Mexico, the Gulf of California. And they're shaking, the, like they, they resonate through the earth. And for whatever reason, that, that's where they're coming up. Coming there. out. I want to say we did an episode on the Taos hum we might, it years. Might be, and I think we did it like five, eight years ago. Like, well, I'm sure there's new pseudoscience out, so let's talk about it. <laughs> uh, well, when you're, I also wanted to make a Hertz donut joke, but I <laughs> Hertz donut. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I ruined um, it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that, like, what is? How sensitive are the the speed the microphones to pick up these would they be able to pick up that frequency i have no idea so no idea it, it's not it. it's not just uh so th a microphone is like just like a speaker right the, the speaker moves like this and it creates a sound wave that we hear yeah. the microphone the people oh, on the podcast can't see your arms it creates waving a around. vibration all right, subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> they, they move, the, the diaphragm moves in and out yeah, based yeah. on the magnetic field that pushes and pulls it, and it creates a sound. The, the microphone actually does the same exact thing. You know, if you're ever in a pinch, you could use a set of, uh, like, headphones as a microphone. You could just talk into it. Yeah, I know blow your mind didn't what? i you can just talk you mentioned this, this i you schooled me on this once before but i want to know how did you find this out i was in a pinch exactly <laughs> what are you some kind of audio engineer now and why am i doing all the audio engineer work you're like oh yeah, yeah. all right in a pinch here's a microphone meanwhile my, my poor flannel cast microphone's broke right now this is week number two of me in this no Honest, honestly, it was, uh, where was I? I was at a, a beer brewing competition and we were doing the, <laughs> just, Chris just spit beer everywhere. Uh, I'm sorry, sp sparkling soda. It's not beer, something. it's sparkling water. But yes, sorry. it's the second uh, time in like 30 minutes. That actually went up my nose a little bit. <laughs> Jesse um, got me good right before we started too. Oh, it feels weird. So it was a, it was a, competition but we needed a mic for like you know have like one of those little like uh guitar amps or something so yeah we totally pieced this crap together and made it work but the so what i'm saying is uh it's not necessarily a speaker or microphone picking it up it might actually be like the accelerometer in the phone like the the oh it's just the, vibrating yeah it's just moving the phone up and down huh. you know like newer phones now like when you look at it like sometimes the dynamic display in the background moves well because it knows your phone's moving. So yeah, it's and not, I wonder if you could just do a. Mic. And then I wonder once you get the the accelerometer data, if you could just do a Fourier analysis and exactly. tease out. Yeah. You know that that I bet you that's how they did it. Yep. Yeah. So easy. we easy. should just yeah. we should just start <laughs> our own Google. Let's Why do it. But let's, I, I, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I do Fourier analyses just for fun, all right? If it's like a Saturday afternoon, we're doing some know. Fourier analysis, all right? Plug my microphone into the output and just, <laughs> and just see, just see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Listen, when I was a kid, I used to play around with stereos and stuff all the time. So, yeah. But that's about it. <laughs> you know, kids won't know about the speaker cable and stuff like that because it's all bluetooth now yeah or like usb won't... it's just a usb everything's usb yeah mm -hmm. yeah they, they won't know about that stuff splicing cable wires and stuff kids are missing out good old That's... good old days i'm just yeah. gonna have my kids usb cords that are cut and let them figure it out Got there you go <laughs> <laughs> it, it reminds me of that chris sent us a picture one day it was like i like i don't know it's like a lincoln continental driving down the street with a, a generator on the top of the car <laughs> <laughs> with a, a air conditioner, like a home air conditioner in the window. Uh, of yeah. Lincoln Continental. It was <laughs> the generator was powering this 
home air conditioner in the window. Engineering. It was, it was so, like, I was just like, I'm so yeah. proud of that guy. That, like, that car must be like 40 degrees in there because that's supposed to cool the whole house. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's cooling as Lincoln. No, don't get me wrong. He's driving down the street with like two feet of air conditioner sticking <laughs> off the side of his car and a generator on top of his car. That's uh, but, yeah. North, Northeast Philadelphia for you, baby. It's the neighborhood <laughs> oh, I grew up man. in. That's, that's uh, something else. I remember that picture. I remember that picture. Yeah. Oh, man. I a picture of that car in my head. I'll never forget it. No. Oh. Yeah. I oh. forgot about that. Jeez. Yeah. Man. But that's what it takes. Sometimes you got to think outside the box. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that, that was my little story. Um, that's cool. Just uh, how cool technology is. You know, sometimes people get mad about like the man always knowing where your phone is and all that stuff. Well, it, it's not all doom and gloom. Sometimes the man is actually looking out for you. Yeah, it's like ninety eight percent doom and gloom. And there's yeah, and it's yeah, like over like line. what Steve said. Even if you have like ten seconds, so say like worst case yeah. scenario 9.0 earthquake or you know just something devastating like that and like you know your alarm goes off all right you get 20 seconds well that's enough for you to get under your desk or yeah, Roll under yeah your i mean yeah. yeah jesse and i have kids that's long enough for me to sprint down the hall yep. you know throw the throw the kids under the bed or under a desk or whatever whatever you know whatever it is you have to do so anyway tw- 20 seconds is enough to to actually get a lot of proactive things done and it could seriously save some lives. Yes, every little bit helps. Every second helps. You know, so that's that's really cool. It's that's uh, it's actually fascinating how they can how they can pull it off. We'll have to remind me, Steve. Send me that link. I'll put it up on the website on the on the Final Cast website. Got it. Oh, I, I have the link. I have them. Yeah. Put on my my fair race board right now. All right. Yeah, that's cool. So, um, all right, Jesse. I know that you're chomping at the bit for this next story. Which which one? Oh, you do whatever you, you promised. You promised our listeners last week about this. Okay, and Je- this this is just Jesse just following up. Well, I'm just promises. gonna turn my mic off and sit back. Oh, and well, be- uh, I want to go get another one of these sparkling waters in I'm a second hold- while Jesse's going off on yeah, this. Yeah, I'm gonna hold you to the bird story until next week. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Next week. All right. So I promised the Fermi paradox and the Drake equation. So get ready. I'm ready, baby. I just, uh, I wish I would have just pretended like I was frozen. Just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So those of us who don't know what any of that means. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you Because, <laughs> because I, I don't. So, um, so we, I, I didn't want to sound like an idiot last week, but I was like, I don't know. I've heard of it. I, I, I think I know it. I, oh, geez, just, just go, Jesse. Just. Great. I'm, I was just waiting for you to just give me the, the floor here. This is where I... Spotlight's on you. Go ahead. So Enrico Fermi... So it's, I'll start I'm muting with, myself right now. I'll start with the Fermi paradox. <laughs> Enrico Fermi, um, famous, famous guy. Um, won the Nobel Prize in 1938. He was a, a physicist. So worked on the Manhattan Project. Um, he was a uh, Italian. I guess Italian. I guess he became an American citizen. Anyway, he came over. He worked on. He was at Los Alamos until he died in in the 50s. So the story goes, and I, <clears throat> it's been sort of verified, but it's at some. I think a little bit apocryphal because the people who were there all have sort of conflicting ideas about it. So it's the early 1950s in Los Alamos. Okay. Um, so there's uh, conversations going on with, uh, they're at the lunch, they're at lunch. Um, and like, he's talking, and it's just all these like famous physicists, Enrico Fermi, I think Edward Teller was there. He's the, he worked on the Manhattan Project. He's the father of the hydrogen bomb as well. Uh, a bunch of other people, no offense to them, but I don't remember who they were. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> was Oppenheimer, is, was Oppenheimer there with them? No, no, he, okay. he was gone from, at this point, he got, he got red scared out. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so this is like the height of, no, I guess not the height, but this is when you start getting a lot of like 
UFO sightings. This is like 1950 mm. sci-fi flying. All right, all right. So this is post Roswell. So uh, no, it's pre Roswell. Oh no, yeah, it is post Roswell because Roswell is 49. Right? Four, yeah, Roswell's in the 40. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like the height of, I guess, like sci-fi, and you get movies coming out about it and whatnot. So they're sitting around, they're sort of talking about it, and the the way the story is always told is that conversation just sort of moves on and they're talking about something else and it's you know it's a while later and they're just sort of chatting and all of a sudden Fermi just shouts where is everybody <laughs> and it, it was the idea <laughs> the, you know the universe is so big and there's there's so much so many stars out there yeah it should just be teeming with life why haven't we heard from them or, or been visited or seen any of this life mm -hmm. and so it's this paradox about how big and 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 numerous things are it's sometimes called the great silence which i like the great silence the great silence and so it's just this idea about scale and probability and and and, and how we think about what's out there and, and the probability of life existing which dovetails into the drake equation so the drake okay. equation is um frank drake dr frank drake is a astrophysicist still alive today um in the early 60s he he didn't necessarily want to quantify life obviously there's the only life we know is here on earth mm -hmm. unless venus this is what makes it topical unless Venus also has life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he sort of wanted to, he wanted to think about this and he just wanted to sort of, he had this, it was one of these thought, thought problems and he just wanted to sort of spark conversation at the first SETI meeting. So SETI is- SETI's, the, yeah, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, it's the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so SETI- That's what is, I was gonna say. Wow, man, we nailed it. And did, did, <laughs> Did uh, I don't know about too much about SETI, but was Carl Sagan with the start of that? Uh, he may have. It actually may have been a little bit before him. I'm not entirely sure when he. But that that's the thing about like okay. SETI is. I'll, you keep on talking. I'll look it up. Okay, SETI is SETI is 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 uh, relatively legitimate. Like, mm -hmm. yeah until relatively recently, like they got funding say from NASA and others because they're doing like real science. When we talk about like a lot of times when we talk about extraterrestrial intelligence, you're, you're walking a fine line, especially like when NASA looks for life, they're looking for biosignatures and, you know, bacteria sort of very simple life. But this is, thinking about it in terms of intelligent civilizations that are out there. And so you do sort of walk a fine line of not being like a, a tinfoil hat kind of person and doing, and doing real science. And so he was at the first meeting of this and I, it was in, I want it was like 1960, 1961. I think it was 61. So I think that might've been a little before Sagan. Um, but he just wanted to sort of, spark conversation or dialogue about the probability of life existing, intelligent life. So he came up with this very famous equation, which mm -hmm. handily was named the Drake equation. Just mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows why that is? Hmm. Um, and so, and it's, it's the probability that intelligent life exists in the universe. And so it's got all these, these factors here and I'll run through them because I know you're excited. So oh, so excited. It's, and then I got something to add on to bring this in full circle now um, that I just learned I'm excited. two seconds ago. So <laughs> you take, you take the, rate of, the rate of stars forming in the, in the universe, the, the number, the fraction of those stars that have planets, the number of those planets that can support life. Mm-hmm. That's the, the uh, Goldilocks zone? Is yes. That so yes, the habitable zone where where we're looking for water which we talked about with Li yeah liquid water liquid water um the fraction of those planets where life actually develops the fraction of those planets where the life becomes intelligent 
the fraction of that intelligent life that develops technology to communicate into space and the length of time that civilization transmits into space because that's what we would be contacted by. Uh And so obviously this is, most of these numbers are purely speculative, right? We can, we can sort of estimate the rate of star formation in the Milky Way. It's about one to three stars, a sun like stars a year. So wow. similar to our solar mass. Okay. Um, prior to Kepler, the number of stars that had planets, we had no idea, but now we're seeing Just most lots stars have planets. Yeah, yeah. And so that fraction of stars with planets is close to one probably. Wow. Uh-huh. The fraction. And so, is, wait, so you're saying that just about every star has a has planets? Well, that's I mean that's one that's, of the, one of the especially the sun like stars. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, most that's the 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 idea from what mm-hmm. our observational data tells us. And planets that can support life, there's a range here, but it, it looks to be about uh, maybe about forty percent of them. Mm-hmm. So, so those are the, the observational data we have. You know, mm-hmm. you're still estimating everything. It's yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And, and all of this estimation is based off of one data point. Well, yes. Well, <laughs> so yeah. all of these other things, uh, yeah, life, yeah, life, develop, you know, life develops, life becomes intelligent. Yeah, it's, Earth is the only one. Yeah, but yeah. This was sort of Fer- Fermi's point, like, in the Milky Way alone, I, for Steve there, I was purposely emphasizing that yeah. I. I. I'm here. Milky. Yeah. Do you say yeah. uh, the Milky Way as opposed to the Milky Way? I say the Mil- Milky, yes. Milky So in the Milky Way. way the Milky Way. There, there's anywhere from 200 to 400 billion stars. Billions and billions of billions. stars. Like the estimate for the entire universe is 300. Are you ready? Yeah, drop some knowledge bombs, baby. Sextillion stars. Hey, wow. let's keep this PG. Yeah, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah. This is we're gonna get a, a thing on the podcast where it says like explicit. Oh, we're going, yeah, we're gonna get a YouTube yeah. strike from this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. well, that's three times ten to the twenty third. Holy cow! That's there like Avogadro. Three times ten to the twenty. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's a lot. So, like you can, there's no real way to to. And I, I tell this to my students a lot of time, like, I can't make you imagine that number. If you take... No, every, it's, it's something like, like, you know, for every star, there's like a grain of sand on the beach or something. Yeah, like not that. even, yeah. You take not even, there's more sand. stars than grains of sand, right? Yeah. 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 You take every human that's ever lived and, and take every cell in their body and it's not even close to this number. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's like an insanely large number. And that was sort of Fermi's point, like, the, the probability that life exists somewhere else is just, it has to be uh, literally astronomically high. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, Drake was trying to maybe bring these numbers more into focus. But is, so, I'm sorry, so does Drake take into account, you mentioned something about intelligence, intelligent life, yeah. does that count? So he's looking for intelligent life, not like microbial. Yep, yeah, right. exactly. Okay. Yeah, so, so, some way for them to be seen or see us. Yeah, I guess. Be, be seen or heard. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So yeah, life develops. Life becomes intelligent. The intelligent life has to develop technology. So if you use the Earth as as your data point, because that's it. That's all we know. You know, life develops pretty early on Earth, and you know, mm-hmm. the, but it takes. Yeah. Four more billion years before. Yeah, and it <laughs> we depends see on how how you technology. Measure, yeah, so, yeah, how you measure intelligence versus yeah, we we develop the, we don't develop technology to communicate into space until 1928 when we get wireless radios. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're not we haven't been communicating and like actively communicating until like the 1960s essentially. Right. 
And then my question is, what if you're so intelligent that you know not to be heard? Yeah, don't, don't, hold oh, the thought. Hold I'm the sorry. Thought. Yeah. So anyway, just sort of estimating these numbers, current estimates using, and then people have, have talked about like just making some wild, wild ass estimates using life develops or whatever the, they can come up with a range. Yeah. Just like uh, Jeff Colbin life uh, <laughs> finds a way. That was good. You added a lot yeah. of bass to your voice for that one. That was, <laughs> really? geez, he's been working on that one. <laughs> careful, careful, buddy. Fan yourself off. We might right. have to add that clip to the, uh, <laughs> the intro song. Yeah. <laughs> Carry so, on. In the Milky Way. In the Milky Way, it ranges anywhere from one, us, me specifically. Specifically. I'm pointing, I'm pointing at the royal you, us. us. Glenside, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> uh, it, it could be anywhere from about 1,000 to 100,000. Hmm. Okay. In the okay. Universe, anywhere from one to upwards of 16 million. So, I mean, just using some of these rough numbers. But the, the, to quote you, the Milky Way, uh, e even just our galaxy is pretty big. It is, it's big for us as humans. It's a pretty yes. average galaxy. But, but what I'm saying is the time it would take for said technological signals to even reach us might take a really, really long time. So mm -hmm. when we try and answer the Fermi paradox, this is one of them. Mm -hmm. Space is Just, very big. Yeah, yeah, as so, it turns out. Yeah. So to communicate across these distances would take a really long time. Even Yeah, so like you said, we're like 100. Our, our, in, the, our earliest information is 100 light years out there now. Yeah, so... Really? The Milky Way alone is is a hundred thousand light years in diameter right but our our technology isn't traveling at the speed of light though i mean the radio signals are that's just a, that's part of light it, is it part I, that that part of the electromagnetic spectrum still travels with that fast i it's, I all, it's all it's all light yeah it's all yeah. Just okay so. nope that's fine i i didn't even i've never thought about it in that perspective before yeah. that's pretty cool and so the, I mean, the universe, the observable universe is off the top of my head. I'm, if I get this number wrong, you know, forgive me. Don't write a letter. I'm fact checking right Don't now. I'll write you a letter on air. You called out the Patreon page earlier. Oh, Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you can become a Patreon and then you can demand us to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, Change I'm a, it back to the misspelled way. Yeah. I'm go a, ahead. What are you I'm fact a, checking? I'm a sedimentary geologist. What do you want from me? Uh, <laughs> the universe is 96 billion light years in diameter yeah give or take fact check that so one of the answers to the paradox is that space is you know not surprisingly vast i got 46 and a half billion light years you sure uh, that's not the radius oh uh, wait Oh, I gotta look this up. All right, um, radius is forty. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, right. I said right. ninety-six. So, so I just have a real quick thought experiment. Yeah. If the if the universe is only thirteen point seven five billion years old, how can the diameter, like if we started from a single point, how can the diameter be that big? Wouldn't that mean stuff would have to move faster than the speed of light? No. Um, no. We're getting That's into a topic. Right. I, yeah. I, 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 I will. I just I want to throw it out there. Yeah, I'll answer it next week, but it has to do with basically inflation. I'll answer it next week. All right. Me, I'm, no, I'm in. Because I, I would have, that's what yeah. I would have guessed. I would have guessed. But no, yeah, it's, not going fast. it's not going faster than the speed of light. But. Okay. So we're at 96 billion. Yeah. I and mean, it just. You don't even need yeah. to know the numbers. It's, it's big. big. It's it's freaking big. 
And so the other, the other sort of answer to this is that time is a factor here. Yeah. We've, in, in a number of ways, we've only been listening and transmitting, you know, for 50 to 100 years of 13.8 billion. What if a civilization did develop technology, but they did it a billion years ago? Right. Even 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're just not overlapping in time or we're not listening. We haven't been listening long enough. Mm -hmm. the right or we're not listening to the right things. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's an idea that intelligent civilizations self-destruct in that, you know, they, I can get behind that. Yeah. And this was, <laughs> Carl Sagan, this was one of Carl Sagan's thing with um, like the nuclear arms race and environmental issues in the eighties about basically saying, please, we need to stop doing this so we don't self-destruct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> but so that's some of it. There's also this other idea that, well, the, the one, and this, I don't know how I feel about it. It sort of makes me sad sometimes when I think about it is that embrace these emotions. It's it, normal to feel well, sad sometimes. Yeah. It's not all rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> it's that we're it's called the rare earth it's that we're alone we're it we're special we're special there's there's well, this there's this idea called the great filter okay and so it's that there's so many steps involved to go from to take non-living material and frankenstein it to life mm -hmm. to like go from abiotic to biotic that that it's it filters all of this stuff out like not many things make it through all of those hurdles essentially and we for whatever reason are here on earth we can't get rid of life we did it no we're trying we're really trying our hardest. i mean there's been crazy mass extinctions and whatnot and it's just it, it keeps on coming back you know I great filter out these lantern flies i would <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did you ever hear of I want to just say this is a fun little thought experiment, right? I and then that. I got I got something else to blow your mind, Jesse, to add on to the Drake equation. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, so when the astronauts went to the moon, um, you know, prove it, prove it. Well, all right. Um, when Stanley Kubrick directed the moon landing, <laughs> it's more like it. Allegedly, <laughs> um, <laughs> when the astronauts went to the moon, right? Um, they basically, they, um, you know, everybody poops, right? And so they had all this human waste. Mm -hmm. They just left in bags, right? On and moon. on the moon, they just left. Yeah, they left it on the moon. And so there's yeah, wait, a- What, are you going to bring that home? <laughs> I mean, leave no trace. Come on, you're ruining the moon, you know? <laughs> have you ever there's, seen, have you ever seen this, the astronaut this, toilet? This is before leave no That's, trace. So the astronaut, How, so when they train- I, this I don't I'm, I'll keep this PG, but they have a camera inside the toilet and they have a TV in front of them because they have to be positioned just right on that toilet to create suction. Oh wow! So they get sort of the full view of of their undercarriage. <laughs> uh, I don't. That would that alone. That would yeah. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I don't need it. There's things humans it's on that side of my body because I wasn't meant just, to see it. <laughs> oh man what made you drop out of astronaut school i learned things about myself that nobody should know <laughs> pretty pretty skittish about the human body um so there is a fun little thought experiment right and this is all it'll ever be is a thought experiment but what if we would revisit those poop bags on the moon that the Apollo astronauts left and see if there's any microbial activity still in the human waste. And the, the, the thought is that we can like life contaminates other places with life and you can't just, no matter where we go, we just can, you know, there, there's, you know, yeah. we have hitchhikers all over us in the form of microbes. You can't well, get away from this. And that was, that's some of the thought about Venus, right? Cause the Soviets sent probes there in the seventies and there's, mm -hmm. there was, uh, I've heard some rumblings like what if it was just microbes on those space probes? That's, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that bacteria that we're seeing now. That's similar. To, yeah, that's exa exactly, exactly. Just like the what's um, pooping on the moon. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, um, nickel for every time I talk about pooping on the moon. <laughs> So, so my, I have a son who's very ambitious. He's like, dad, I, I really, I really, really want to be an astronaut. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that, you know, that's, you know, that's a very ambitious, you know, life plan. Like what, why, but, why do you want to do this? But, but Steve, it's a great pickup line at a bar. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> that's his reasoning. But honestly, he goes, it, you know, this is how ambitious my son is. He's like, I want to be an astronaut so I could take a nap on the moon. Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. Hey, listen. I mean, only like 17 people. No. 17 people have been on the moon. Yeah. It, but that, that, this, this is my kid. Like, yeah. Yeah. Really, really ambitious. And yeah. then like, nope, let you down. Just, yeah. <laughs> Apple didn't fall far from the tree, <laughs> Peterson. <laughs> I don't want to change the world. I just want to. Do something cool. I just want to take a nap in it. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah, right. Sorry, Karen. So, well, so um, I'll, I'll seg segue here to some other ideas about some answers. Steve's about people not transmitting. Well, people have walked on the moon. Anyways, continue. Uh, there's been 16 Apollos or 17 Apollos. 16. Uh, no, 16. Apollo 17 was the They Might Be Giants album. Oh, uh, so it was also a horror movie. Ooh. They actually sent a 17th Apollo up, but it never came back. Oh. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Um, so the, there, there's an idea that there's like bad actors, bad civilizations out there, and other intelligent civilizations know that. So they purposely don't transmit. Oh, they're like, we're, we're, listen, you're not even worth our time. Yeah. Well, Talk about a cold shoulder. Well, no, it's or, just that we're, we're transmitting and they're going to see us and then they're going to attack us. Well, that's what um, Death Star. Stephen so. Hawking was afraid of. He yeah. goes, when in human history have like, uh, like people gone over to and explored new lands and, was ve and were very polite to the natives that yeah. lived there? You know? <laughs> I, I will say, so we've, we've, so this was, which is what the movie Independence Day was about, yeah. a cinematic classic with Will wow. Smith and Jeff Goldblum, another one with Jeff Goldblum. Oh. Uh, time's up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was excellent, wait, too. Yeah. Wait, Je wait, Jeff Goldblum was in, he was in Independence Day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't screwing that up. Um, yeah. So this, this is the idea. But of the messages we've sent out, aside from <clears throat> random, like, everyday electromagnetic signals, signals from radio and television, we've had targeted things we've sent. So we've okay. had like, we've had these unknown signals that we have no explanation for. So the wow signal, are you familiar with the wow signal? Is that from like quasars? Is that? Well, no, they don't know. So oh. well, yeah, we can do, I don't know if we have a minute here, we could talk about one of the more egregious Nobel prizes. So in the, <laughs> yeah, in the, in the 60s, let's, let's take this away from them. <laughs> well, yeah. So in the sixties, um, a grad student was studying, she was doing radio astronomy and, and she basically discovered pulsars. So um, collapsed stars that are mm -hmm. rotating really fast, shooting beams. Mm -hmm. And so they detected like this regular beam every like 90 minutes just sending this pulse they're like a lighthouse and so like what is this so they actually they nicknamed it lgm1 for little green men one okay and they thought it was aliens that well not really sure that's what yeah but it's so jacqueline um, bell burnell was the one who discovered it but they gave the nobel prize for the discovery to her two advisors Oh. And, you know two two old two old men and only one of the two thanked her in their in their thanks speech oh <laughs> yeah so egregious yeah, um, yeah so the the wow signal though was in the 70s but, but just can we just pause here real quick yeah. when, when you two become old advisors i want yeah. you to remember taking this all that credit. taking all this <laughs> 
No. <laughs> that's, that's all. <laughs> Carry on. I think we're a little too close to the grad student phase as yeah, opposed to the advisor phase. I don't like but, taking credit now. No, I know, I know. I, 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 not for a million, you know, not one in a million chance do I think you would take credit for something like this. <laughs> but <laughs> just yeah. wanted to point that out. Carry on. Um, so the wow signal is actually pretty cool <clears throat> because it was this, this burst of energy. So it was a radio telescope at Ohio State. The Ohio State? The, the one and only. Okay. And the radio telescope, because it was listening, was called the Big Ear, which is a great name <laughs> for a radio that telescope. Is great. Wait, it's what was that? The Big Ear? <laughs> the Big Ear? I'm now, kidding. Uh, he, the ear. You hear with ears. It's not funny. Don't even. Don't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not there don't, anymore. Don't even entertain it at this point. Like it's. <laughs> I'm almost positive it's a parking lot now. Yeah. <laughs> um, it detected this signal. It was 73 seconds. But it was all on the same wavelength of hydrogen. And so one of the ideas is, is that if you're going to transmit something long distances, you would do it sort of at, at a wavelength along hydrogen because there's just so much hydrogen. In there. And there's no, we have no explanation really of what caused it. And we've never heard it since, even though people have been listening, but it's called the wow signal because the, the old analog system, when it, 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 um, it, it would, the output, at that signal would be like a number zero, one, two, three, depending on how high it got. Uh-huh. After it got to nine, it would go to the alphabet. Well, in the 73 seconds, so you, you can see the printout of it because they would get printouts every day. And the person would come in in the morning and look at the printouts and just see if anything was out of ordinary. And they saw it was like zero, one, zero, one, two, 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 zero, one, zero, one, X, Q, X, Z, like J, nine, like just this pulse of energy and they circled it all and wrote wow with an exclamation point next to i'm it. looking at it right now it's yeah, like yeah you can see the print it's actually pretty funny but there's no idea i think it was in the direction of like sagittarius or something just no explanation for it i'm gonna do uh i don't know if i can set this up i should do a screen share i i, I have the i have the image right now but yeah you're right it's like yeah are you looking at it right now no no i've just oh. seen it so many times um you can um We've so we've sent messages in that direction where we detected it, uh huh. And so the idea, and this is one of Stephen Hawking's things, was like, should we be doing that? Like, should <laughs> we be sending? But the one, so there was one that Arecibo, the big radio telescope in Puerto Rico, sent, mm-hmm. and that has since like, fallen apart. Yeah, um, need need some help. Um, they should start a Patreon. You really should. Is that like the big, big one that was in like James Bond? James Bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So they they sent up like a binary one, just ones and zeros. But more recently, there has been one. I think it was called Simple Response. Oh, it was also in contact. Oh, where they they collected ten thousand Twitter tweets and sent that out. And sometimes oh. it, like. If we're trying to keep people away, yeah, that's the best way. That's it. <laughs> exactly. That, I think the next thing they should do is just broadcast the Kardashians. Just, yeah. just put that out there. <laughs> so there's, so there's this other idea, and it's it's called the zoo hypothesis. Okay. And the zoo hypothesis is there is intelligent life out there, but they all have this collective understanding to not bother us. They're just watching us to see what we do. Oh, I'm I'm down with that hypothesis because let's let's face like the Stephen Hawking thing. Like, why are we sending things out there? They're just going to come and kill us. Like, to what end? Like, why just go and kill things? Uh, I mean, no, I. I, (laughs) But maybe resource. The idea is resources. They would come here. Right. Resources. That's what I'm saying, though. There's got to be resources on planets without life yeah to make it easier to get those resources well yeah like since you you don't have to blow up the white house you can just (laughs) yeah the diamond go to neptune and just 
Here's mine the this diamonds. is the perfect segue. So I've been waiting for this. All right. All I'm, right, gentlemen. I'm just end this call now, just to keep on. And the episode's over. No. <laughs> um, did you know about Carl Sagan's input on this topic? The Sagan paradox. No. Tell Whoa. Me. Wow. All right. Because I, so. I do, when I do, a, so I do a lecture on this. Mm -hmm. And I always end with, in terms of the answers for the paradox, I always end with, we're alone. It's the rare earth. And then I play Carl Sagan's pale blue dot. You know, that, that little <laughs> monologue he gives. Very poetic right there. He, he really is. I, <laughs> yeah. I just, a tear comes down my cheek. Uh, <laughs> it's just me alone so in 1969 carl sagan um was basically trying to say that he didn't think because there you know once again ufo madness i guess in the 60s um and he didn't he was against the idea that ufos were piloted by extraterrestrial beings right oh. and so what he did was he added on to the drake equation he applied, he applied uh, some assumptions that the Drake equation kind of um, spelled out previously. So Carl Sagan said that well, he calculated that um, there's about 1 million advanced civilizations that are capable of interstellar travel. All right. And then he making said, that number up or? what's that? Just making that number up or? That's what that's what Sagan calculated. I mean, oh, okay. he calculated oh, that based oh, based on oh, the Drake oh. equation, right? Got it. Got it. And then how dare you? And then he said that any civilization that wanted to check on other civilizations on a regular basis, and then he said, like, say once a year, if you want to check on another civilization once a year, but to check on all the civilizations once a year, you would have to launch ten thousand spacecraft annually, right? That's a lot of spacecraft for these for these intelligent civilizations to be sending out. And he goes, yeah. not only is that crazy, that's a ridiculous number of, of launches, but it would take all of the material in 1% of the universe's stars to produce oh. spaceships needed for these civilizations to reach out to each other. And Holy yeah, so it takes a lot of resources just to, just to do that, to keep on, if you wanted to uh, travel to other, um, you know, to other, other planets to seek out other civilizations. So, my addendum to this would be that's using 1969 knowledge. Okay. Well, hold on. There's, there's still a little, there's still a little more to this. There's, oh, there's, I, got, I got, I got a couple other things to add to this. Because I've, then, got, I've got two more answers. Okay. Okay. Hold that thought for one second. All right. You can't do that. Okay. <laughs> so then Sagan then says, okay, listen, if earth is being chosen and all these, all these aliens are, are coming to, to visit our earth, we would have to assume that something's up with our planet to make this thing very unique. All right. And that goes exactly against the idea that there's lots of civilizations around. So what makes us so special, you know, because there's gotta be lots of civilizations around. So that's a good again, point. Yep. Once again, Earth, we're not special. We keep on learning. All throughout Earth's history, as, as all throughout our, human our, history, there's nothing we thought that we were the center of the universe and all this stuff. Like, yeah, you know, it's all our hubris. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's... Um, so then he goes, uh, basically, uh, to, you know, if, if civilization was, was common, they, they're not going to be coming. They're not going to be coming to Earth. There's, there's going to be a lot of other civilizations to, you know, to, to check out. And, you know, we're not... We're, we're, we don't think of us as special. So, and this was really exciting too, because at the time, you know, this like the study for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence or SETI or, you know, that, that the whole field of searching for life outside of the earth was kind of considered like fringe science, I guess you could say. And people were like, oh, you're just one of those like UFO crazy people, you know? But because of Carl Sagan saying like, no, 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 these UFOs, whatever we're seeing in the sky, it's probably not piloted by, by, you know, extraterrestrial life. You know, there, there probably is extraterrestrial life out there, most likely, you know, statistically, but this, they're, 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 this isn't, they're not being piloted by aliens and they're probably not coming to earth. So that, that's really hit that whole school of thought kind of allowed these opportunities for people to you know, search for extraterrestrial life and not be considered one of these loonies with the UFOs. 
Yeah, that that's one of the <clears throat> one of the explanations for the paradox of the Fermi paradox is that we're just like we're a galactic backwater. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we're the hillbillies down the dirt road, and like no, no one's coming off the main road to come visit us, you know, on purpose. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone takes a wrong turn. And the zoo hypothesis, maybe like the kid falls in the enclosure and then the ape gets shot, right? But, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, we're just, we're just not really that important. We're just sort of hanging out here and no one's talking to us because they're like, oh, look at, these, look at these dummies over here with their radio. Yeah, yeah right. Wireless. Yeah. But <clears throat> so that, that's that's sort of the, the the one big answer the other one sort of along the same lines of us just being sort of not that advanced or order or, or important is that the technologies involved we don't possess and so we might not just be looking or listening we to don't the possess right. the technology to look or listen to what is being transmitted exactly Unless aliens are already here and we just can't see them or detect them. Exactly. Just think of us looking at microbes on a moon of Saturn yeah. or something like that. Like, yes, there, there may be actually technically life somewhere else, even just in our solar system. And that doesn't mean that doesn't make that life any less life. It just makes it harder to detect, harder to understand so we could be those microbes to, yeah. you know, those super intelligent beings out there. Just like, Psh. it's like the scene in Men in Black where there's the whole galaxy inside the little yeah, the little marble on the dog's collar. Yep, that's we're just hanging out in the dog's collar. We are, that's and I'm okay story. with that. <laughs> so it's because we had. Two references to Jeff Goldblum movies today, and two references to Will Smith movies today. Hey, That's, we, so and one with, movie with, with some Will overlap. Smith, with some overlap, one movie with both Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum in it. That's <laughs> all I strive for every podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Forget, forget Kevin Bacon. The true golden ratio. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So this is all, uh, Jesse. I'm impressed with the level of. <laughs> knowledge of the Drake equation and the Fermi hypothesis. Yeah. Paradox. Come, paradox. Come, sorry. Paradox. Come to my basement and you just see like red <laughs> yeah. and, and it's just yarn. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. That's why he's not in his basement today. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> he ran out of yarn. <laughs> so let me, let me quiz you. What do you think it is? What's your answer? <sighs> I, I'd like to think of the time factor, the the time and or intelligence, both. So let's let think about this. Where would the dinosaurs be if the Deccan traps didn't happen and the Chicxulub impact didn't happen? Or what if the aliens come to see the dinosaurs and like, what are these guys? Yeah. Wh- no, but but seriously, like, what video signal out? Would the dinosaurs have evolved to, you know, become have technology? No, I don't think so. Because you, I don't think so. There are other species that have been around longer. Just as, sharks. Sharks yeah. aren't sending. That's they what don't I'm have. Thinking radio telescopes unless no, but that, but some that. Sort of frequency we don't know exactly oh, the dolphins the, you gotta watch out they're sneaky <laughs> well, there, were, there was actually a star trek episode about or movie about uh whales signals or something like saving the planet anyway what what i'm saying is i i think it is our hubris i think we just don't we just don't know yeah. i think it's out there I'm on. I'm on the same. I think the probability there's just so many stars. Probably yeah, yeah. So high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But time and think, space are so vast. It's just so. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's just it's just like can't get across. There's the scale. That, thing is, is, yeah. I mean, I I I do. I think that there's there's got to be there has to be something else out there. Yeah. It's but, just a matter of when when. 
<clears throat> yeah. So yeah. just when? Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to believe. Is that next files reference? It is. The, the, <laughs> truth is. the truth is out there. Yeah, the truth is out there. Isn't that I want to believe that's the poster that the poster in the back, yeah, like in the, the background or of yeah, um, it has the flying saucer on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was that? Um uh jeez, I've watched X Files in years. The main character, David Duchovny's character. Yeah, um, Scully? Mulder. Scully was uh, Scully is Julian. Uh, Scully was the yeah. lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mulder. Mulder. A couple of years yeah. ago I watched I rewatched the first season. It's it's uh great and or terrifying. <laughs> Like, I never, I never ever watched it. Yeah, watched oh, I the loved first it. Season, yeah, oh, yeah, it was great. I think we need to talk about this more in Sasquatch, and our I, ratings will really go up. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of the X Files reboot about five years ago. They did like a little mini series yeah, kind of thing, a short, a short season. I tried to rewatch the the series to cut to watch the reboot, and I I made it like three seasons, and then turns out I don't have time to watch. <laughs> yeah i didn't care for the reboot i loved the first episode of the reboot and then after that it was like the stories i don't know i didn't really care for anyways yeah anyway well we how about that i didn't expect yeah. to do a whole episode today of the the fermi paradox and the drake equation that was hey uh, you but, called me out and then i got nervous here, here's you did what, here's what the geology flannel chaos offers you is just a well-rounded background information and in, in information or just general sciences, yeah. you know, just a little bit, touch on a little bit of everything, you know, it doesn't have to, well, you know, geology is also just a conglomeration of all of the sciences. Anyways, it's all of those planets with all of those intelligent life. That's geology. Yeah. And just think of uh, extraterrestrial paleontology. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Goodness I mean, gracious. <laughs> the so extraterrestrial soils yeah the fluvial systems where the, where the where the water is nitrogen come on yeah <clears throat> yeah what is is it titan where it's what, what are the oceans methane i think methane, methane yeah I think yeah. Methane. yeah yeah anyway anyway well you know thanks Thanks for listening. Thanks to our sponsor, The Formatting Formula. Thank you to all of our Patreons out there. And if you want to become a Patreon, Chris, where do they go? You can go to patreon.com slash geologyflannelcast. Nice. Or you can just go to geologyflannelcast.com. We'll send you to everything. Yeah. And it's your, your all-encompassing nexus of Geology Flannelcast information. All right. <laughs> so much better way than I was going to say one stop shop. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <very laughs> it, it, <laughs> it was tell a friend August. What what is September? Um so invite a buddy. Send a friend to Patreon. Yeah. In, 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 <laughs> invite a buddy September or something. Fun. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's send <laughs> sucker. <laughs> send your, nice. Send your Significant Tell, other. Send your significant oh, other to Geology Flannel Fest. I love it. Send a significant other September. Yeah. Yeah. I, I even asked my wife today. I was like, oh, do you want to be a special guest? She said, no. And no <laughs> hesitation. Like no, no hesitation at all, right? <laughs> no. just, just get out of here. Go into your dungeon. Do your little cute little podcast you do every week, Steve. And exactly. <laughs> leave me alone. Exactly. Alert. <laughs> no, she's just angry. And, you know, my internet cut out like, you know, 27 times today. She just gets mad because she can't watch TV. <laughs> so. I was, I, you know, pre-show when we were talking about um, vaccines, I could hear Sarah just like shaking her head. But she works on vaccines. <laughs> she, she's she's like, like, That's not how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works in geology. Yep. <laughs> anyway thank you everyone for listening thank you for many formula thank you to our patreons thank you to all of our listeners and downloaders like yeah. you know again number one in south africa that's awesome uh, i was impressed i had a double i had to look at that number twice i was like what the heck yeah, is really? even if chris wow. lied, even if chris lied to me i'm okay with it no that's yeah right. i hope he lies every week because it made my day Oh, really? <laughs> he just picks a new country every every week. Yeah, <laughs> Steve. I texted it to these guys. And Steve texted me back. And he goes, "This is how it all begins. <laughs> yeah. This is how it all starts, fellas." That's like, right. This is it. Listen, you know, if you want to become big in podcasting, you got to become big in South Africa. And Otherwise, there, 
Well, the other thing there is a power vacuum in the podcasting world. You know, Rogan goes over to Spotify. You know, it's a power struggle to, to get that number one spot now. Um, yeah, you know, I'm telling so. you. Yeah, we're we're in it. We're in it to win it. <laughs> and here we are, 62 episodes in. So yeah, Spotify, man. Spotify. If you want to give us that Rogan money, just come to geologyflannelcast.com. That's how. That's the best way to get yeah, get in touch with us. Start with how like, about one one years. millionth of that Rogan money. I'll take. I'll take. <laughs> Yeah, Wh- one, whatever one, that was, that forty-five bucks or whatever it is, yeah, after taxes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't need to I just, you know, become a become a Patreon. That's all I need. Yes, yes, exactly. And Patreon so, plans start as 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 little as two dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's and one. We're trying one mm. cup we're, of coffee. Yeah, it really, it really is. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, go to geologyflannelcast.com. You want to uh, follow us on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com slash geologyflannelcast. On Twitter, we're at geoflannelcast. That's the only one that's different. Um, yeah, like I said, patreon.com slash geologyflannelcast. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, I don't have anything else to say. You guys, you gentlemen have anything else to say for episode, was it 60? 62 right so you said jesse 62 i think it is 62 yeah i think 62 60 was our uh jurassic park Park episode and last week and then yeah if you want i could try to give some sort of dad britney spears joke or something i was just i was gonna end with the truth is out there (laughs) yes it's perfect just just that's it goodbye everybody we love you guys thanks for listening we'll see you guys